Good day guys. Welcome to chapter 2 Ecology. In this video, you will learn about the last subtopic 2.5 Population Ecology. In this subtopic, you will learn about biotic potential and environmental resistance and their effect on population growth, carrying capacity and its importance, natality and mortality and their effects on the rate of population growth. What is population ecology? Population ecology is the study of population in relation to their environment. It only focuses on the changes that occur in a population, including environmental influences on population density and distribution, age structure and variations in population size. Population ecology is a subfield of ecology that deals with the dynamics of species populations. The term population ecology is often used interchangeably with population biology or population dynamics. Population growth is the increase in the number of individuals in a population. A population will increase in number when the available resources are greater than required at that particular time. The growth of a population is determined by the organism's biotic potential, which is symbolized by small r. What is a biotic potential? According to Chapman 1925, biotic potential means power of organisms to reproduce and survive, or maximum number of offspring. An organism can produce under ideal condition. For example, frog can lay thousands of eggs, while a panda can give birth to one or two cubs at a time. Between a panda and a frog, which has the highest biotic potential? It's of the frog. The higher the number of offspring produced, the higher its biotic potential. Environmental resistance Environmental resistance are all those environmental conditions that prevent population from achieving their biotic potential. It is also known as limiting factors. This is uh, the formula to calculate environmental resistance, where K representing carrying capacity and N representing population size. In the growth of a population, in reality, when populations become too large, it will run out of some limiting resources. For example, when the number of individuals is too many, the population will run out of food supply, limited space and so on. So this will result in the growth, uh, slow growth, results in slow growth and the population size will tend to stabilize. What caused the population to become stabilized? is due to this environmental resistance. Environmental resistance will prevent a population from growing exponentially. Environmental resistance will stabilize the size of the population. For example, in this population of fish, when the food supply and the other resources are available, the number of individuals will keep on increasing. But when it reaches certain number of individuals in the population, some limiting factors will occur, such as decreasing oxygen supply, low food supply, 
disease, predators, and limited space. So this will prevent the population from growing exponentially and the size of the population will become stabilized. These are the examples of environmental resistance, accumulation of waste products, increased competition between members, for example, competition for mating, competition for food, and so on, limited supply of food, temperature, light, predation, and pH. Carrying capacity. Carrying capacity is the maximum population size that can be supported by the available resources. It is symbolized by capital K. Carrying capacity is determined by both biotic potential and environmental resistance. Changes in response to environmental changes. This fishbowl represents an ecosystem. It is a place where living and non-living things interact with each other. Abiotic factors are the non-living components of an ecosystem. In the fishbowl, this includes the water and its temperature, the rocks, and the amount of oxygen. Biotic factors are living factors. The fish and the plants are the biotic factors in the fishbowl ecosystem. Organisms instinctively reproduce as many times as possible. Populations have the potential to increase indefinitely. But an ecosystem can only support a certain number of individuals. Why? Let's look at the growth of the fish population once again on this graph here. What does that dotted line represent? And why can't the population increase after it? The dotted line represents the carrying capacity of the fishbowl ecosystem. The carrying capacity is the maximum population that can be supported by an ecosystem. Notice that we say support, not fit or hold. We could fit a lot of fish in the fishbowl, but we can only support a certain number of individuals. Populations that surpass the carrying capacity cannot be supported. There are not enough resources to support all individuals. Stable populations remain near the carrying capacity. The carrying capacity is determined by the amount of resources in the environment. Environmental factors that prevent populations from further increasing are called limiting factors. In aquatic ecosystems, available oxygen is often a limiting factor. If resources increase, carrying capacity increases as well. But in our fishbowl, it wasn't a matter of space. It was more likely the amount of oxygen that limited the growth of the fish population. If we add more plants, they'll produce more oxygen. And if there's more oxygen in the fishbowl, the carrying capacity can increase. We can support more fish. If the carrying capacity increases, the population will increase as well. Carrying capacity, the maximum number of individuals that can be supported by an ecosystem. Population growth is also affected by natality or birth rate. Natality is the rate at which a particular species or population produces offspring. Population growth is also affected by mortality or death rate. Mortality is the rate at which a particular species or population dies, whatever the cause.
population growth is primarily affected by birth and death rate. If the birth rate is high and the death rate is low, the number of individuals in the population or the population size will increase. But if the birth rate is low and the death rate is high, the population size will decrease. Next subtopic is population growth curve, where you will learn about two types of growth curves, which are exponential growth curve, for example, human, and logistic growth curve, for example, paramecium. You will also learn limiting factors affecting the population size, which is divided into two density dependent factors and density independent factors. Population growth curve. There are two types of growth curve exponential growth curve and logistic growth curve. For exponential growth curve, the curve is increasing upwards, while in logistic growth curve, the curve is in S shape. Exponential growth curve refers to unlimited growth of population. Occurs when environmental, environmental conditions are not limiting. Means that there is no environmental resistance. So this enables the population to keep on increasing exponentially. The population that has exponential growth curve is able to reproduce at maximum biotic potential. So this will cause a large population growth. For example, is in human population. For logistic growth curve, it is S-shaped curve as a result of environmental resistance. Remember, for exponential, exponential growth curve just now, does not have any environmental resistance. So that's why the curve or the population growth can occur continuously. But in logistic growth curve, since there is the present a presence of environmental resistance, so the population size will be stabilized, which increases in intensity as the population density increases. This referring to the environmental resistance. Until it reaches a steady level, achieve its maximum carrying capacity. Means that the population size will continue to will grow continually, continuously until, until it reaches a steady level. This is due to the presence of environmental resistance. Usually, it happens when the population has reached its maximum carrying capacity. For example, population of paramecium sp. For logistic growth curve, the curve can be divided into four phases. The first one is lag phase, second is log phase, third is transitional phase, and fourth is stationary phase. For lag phase, the paramecium prepares to grow cell, div cell division and differentiation of tissues. At this phase, the paramecium is adapting to the environment. So that's why the growth is very slow earlier of the curve. Second phase is log phase. This is when the paramecium are growing, producing new organisms and dividing rapidly to take advantage of fresh medium. This happens when the paramecium is already, are already adapted with their environment. As the number of individuals increases, 
the space and food becomes limited. So this will cause the growth to become slow down. So this is in the third phase. And the last phase is stationary phase where birth of new organisms and death of old one is in equilibrium. So the number of individual in the population will become stabilized near its carrying capacity. Next is on limiting factors. There are two types of limiting factors which are density independent factors and density dependent factors. Density independent factors refers to any characteristic that is not affected again not affected by population density while for density dependent factors refers to any characteristics that varies with population densities. Density dependent factors. Population growth rates are affected by population size. Usually, it is caused by biotic factors. For example, predation, competition, territorial behavior, and parasitism. All these are the limiting factors that is affected by population size. The second one is density independent factors affect all populations in similar ways regardless of the population size. No matter how large or how small the population is, this uh, density independent factors may affect the population. Usually it is caused by abiotic factors. For example, unusual, unusual weather either extreme cold, extreme winter, or extreme temperature, high temperature in the desert, natural disasters, for example, earthquake, uh, tornadoes, vol volcanic ruptures, and also human activity. Any abiotic factor or biotic factor that restricts the number or reproduction of organisms in an ecosystem is called a limiting factor. Take this ecosystem found in the fishbowl. The limiting factors could be the size of the bowl, the amount of water, or the temperature, and any of these can limit the number of fish that can survive in the fishbowl. Limiting factors can be dependent limiting factors and independent limiting factors. Dependent limiting factors depend on the number of organisms. For example, the amount of food available for each organism depends on the number of organisms in this ecosystem. An independent limiting factors does not depend on the number of organisms. For example, the amount of rainfall does not depend on the number of organisms. You also have density dependent limiting factors and it is a limiting factor that depends on population size. For example, these could include competition, predation, parasitism, and disease. Let's look at a list of abiotic limiting factors. This could include sunlight, climate, temperature, water, space, soil chemistry, fire, and natural disasters. And a list of biotic limiting factors include the number of plants, number of animals, amount of competition, number of decomposers, number of parasites, and disease-causing agents. We have finished with the second chapter, Ecology. You can scan this QR code and try a quiz on ecology in quizzes. Thank you.